This is Trend Following Radio, where great thinking comes alive. Nobel Prize winners, legendary traders, best-selling authors, and the pros that know what drive us irrational human beings. I am your host, Michael Covell. Not filtered, raw, honest. That's my passion. I sent out a newsletter the other day, and if you're not subscribed to it, feel free. It's free. You can unsubscribe at any point in time. Just go to trendfollowing.com, send in your email, and click confirm, and that's it. So I sent out an email newsletter, and I said this. Let me tell you a performance story. Consider some interesting dates. Number one, trend following performance was incredible in October 1987. Number two, trend following performance was incredible in 2002. Number three, trend following performance was incredible in 2008. Number four, trend following performance was incredible in March 2020. Number five, trend following performance was incredible in 2021. And number six, trend following performance is incredible. The year's not over so far in 2022. So I said to all those people on my newsletter list, do you know why trend following returns happened on those dates? Question mark. Simple question that everybody who is an investor or trader or involved in the market should be able to answer. And if they can't answer it, my God, you should not be investing or trading. You should have your money on the sidelines. If you don't know why trend following killed it on Black Monday, 1987, when the stock market crashed over 20% on that day, if you don't know why in 2002, when the NASDAQ went down 77%, if you don't know why trend following killed it, if you don't know why in October 2008, basically the month that the big short film was all made about. If you don't know why trend following made a bloody fortune in the month of October 2008 alone, not to mention the whole year of 2008, if you don't know why trend following was making a ton of money in March 2020, right when the pandemic was unfolding, and 2021, a continuation of the pandemic, and here we are in 2022, and the first four months of 2022, trend following performance is epic huge. Do you know why? A lot of people don't. And that's okay. Look, I would not have known the answer to that question many years ago as well, because it takes some understanding. It takes looking behind the curtain. It takes saying to yourself, all of the people on CNBC and Bloomberg and Yahoo Finance, it takes saying to yourself that those people don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. Wow, I sound really confident. Like I'm some guy that can see into the future. I'm smarter than these other people. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying I'm not that. I'm saying you should not be that. I'm saying that, for example, the CNBC talking head, the same talking heads that have been on there for decades with the same talking points, saying the same shit, making predictions after predictions after predictions, and no one's ever following up to find out how any of what they say works out. But hey, that's the system. So against that backdrop, how does trend following do well on those dates that I mentioned? I mean, here we are in the summer of 2022. I don't know what's going to happen next. Now I can look at the current environment and I can say, well, we've had a zero interest rate equity market boom for over a decade. I can see that inflation is going past 40-year highs, and I can see the Fed is raising rates. Now, I'm not making any market decisions off those particular moves, but I'm paying attention. And I realize, like you realize, that we are at an interesting point in history. And I think from this moment in time, we can all imagine, why not? NASDAQ goes down 70%. The S&P cuts by 50%. Why can't you imagine that? It's happened a couple times in the last 22, 23 years. It can happen again. So back to that trend following performance at all those key dates that I'm challenging you that you must know about. How could trend followers do so well when the rest of the world is going to hell in a handbasket? Now, those are not the only dates trend following makes money. 
trend following does exceptionally well when big events happen, big unexpected events that cause people like Kramer on CNBC to start hyperventilating, to cause people to start screaming and yelling and politicians promising this and that. That's when trend following can really make a dent for you. And especially as we look ahead to the future, again, as I just said, we can all imagine that we are at one of those moments in time where bad stuff can happen to you if you're a buy and holder. If you're just somebody who trusts the system, lays there in bed at night, waits for Yellen to come in, maybe give you a foot massage, I'm not into that. I don't know what you're into. I mean, I hope you keep it clean. But if you trust that, if you trust the foot massage, if it advances to something more, if your trust advances to something more to where you really give all of your energy and spirit and intellectual capital to a bunch of bureaucrats and politicians posing as economists, posing as currency manipulators, posing as who the hell knows what politicians, frankly, that's what they're posing as. They are politicians. They're not even posing as politicians. They are politicians. That's the deal. But you don't want to be in that situation. But a lot of people are. How do you get out of it? Well, if you've got all your eggs in that basket, if you're trusting the Janet Yellen foot massage, it's kind of tough because you're long your house and you're long stocks. If the house drops like 2008 or if stocks drop like 2008 or March of 2020, you're SOL. Shit out of luck. So you have to decide what kind of life do you want to lead? Do you want to be in a situation where you are trusting this system that's clearly rigged, clearly manipulated, and that's how you get your performance gains, which is basically how your neighbor gets his or her performance gains. Is that what you want? If you're cool with it, you're comfortable, and you can roll with that, be my guest. Back to the point, back to my opening salvo, those key dates those key trend following dates. How does something like that happen? How can this strategy that I have spent a good portion of my adult life telling people about, teaching people about, how can this strategy do so well when everyone else is not doing well? Again, everyone else is generally long only in an index fund. That's what they trust. They trust the efficient market theory, the efficient market hypothesis, whatever you want to call it, they trust that. Well, trend following is not that. Trend following looks at the world at the beginning of each year, the beginning of each month, the beginning of each day, and a trend follower says, what's moving, number one, number two, am I on board? And that moving could be up or down, long or short. And we're not just talking about stock indices. We're talking about some diversification in the thinking to be a trend following trader. So the way those events, those dates that I mentioned, the way that they unfold to give trend following big performance is that when the rest of the world starts going to hell in a handbasket and the index funds start taking it on the chin, money leaves index funds. It goes somewhere. It can go to currencies. It can go to commodities. It can go to gold. It can go to whatever other asset. But other assets start to move. And even if it's not a direct one-to-one, leave index funds and go to other markets, other markets start to move for hedging reasons. Very large funds, big agricultural concerns. When rates start to change, everything changes. Sometimes it changes fast. Sometimes it changes slow. If I can think of 2008, a lot of markets long before October 2008 October 2008 was the big mother of all sell-offs, right? But before that, assorted markets, currencies, rates, agriculturals, grains, metals, markets were moving. Even if but a little, they were taking a direction. They were starting to go a direction. Maybe not pronounced, but they were starting to move a direction. At the same time, the indices were starting to tick down. So the fear was in the market. Now, if you don't have a trend following strategy, you're not paying attention to this really because you're just paying attention to, eh, the market's down five or 10%, whatever. But at this point in time, if we use 2008 as an example, trend following traders are taking positions long before that October 2008 moment happens. 
long before the big crater happens. So if on one side of the ledger, you have the buy and hold index types, the vast majority of market players, that's over there. On the other side of the ledger, you have trend following traders who are taking positions because the momentum is going in a certain way. And they're taking positions in rates, metals, currencies, et cetera. So they're in these markets, waiting, not predicting, not knowing what's going to happen next, waiting, 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 not five minute bar day trading nonsense bullshit. For all of you people out there, the next person that texts me to tell me they are trading five minute bars or 60 minute bars or whatever bullshit. No, you're not. I don't even believe any of you anymore. You're making it up. Side tangent finished. Back to my point. Trend following traders are in all of these markets, long and short, depending. And again, they're waiting, waiting until something happens, some trigger, like, for example, October 2008, when the shit hit the fan. And when you've already taken positions, arguably months in advance, when there was not much directional movement, just enough to take an entry. When you get to a moment like October 2008, boom, that's where the big money comes from. That is exactly where the profits come from. Because as a trend following trader, you're already in assorted positions. You're not just another lemming trusting Yellen's foot massage on your buy and hold index fund. And so when the October 2008 happens, you are already in positions going the right direction. What's the right direction? The way the market's moving up or down. It doesn't make a difference. You're not trying to predict. But when you have that cathartic release, that October 2008, and you're already in, as a trend following trader, all of these assorted markets in advance, well, then you're just on house money, so to speak. It's kind of like lottery wins. I mean, you couldn't predict it. You didn't know that was going to happen in October 2008. I remember Ben Stein famously saying that if you made money in October of 2008, you were doing something wrong because he's defending the status quo. He's defending the Yellen foot massage. I mean, it's great. If it works, if it continues, you just have to make a choice. What do you want for a life strategy? Now, the strategy that I just described the trend following strategy working over the course of 2008, then really making a fortune in October of 2008, when the equity markets of America took a deep nosedive, that's where the profits come from. It's the same thing for 1987. It's the same thing for 2002. It's the same thing for March of 2020. It's the same thing for this year. It's a quite brilliant strategy, if you think about it, to take positions in assorted markets, all types of markets, because there is movement in a direction, and to take a position in the direction of that movement, of that market, and to sit there and wait to be patient, and frankly, to see what happens. That's what trend following does. Trend following puts you in a position of waiting to see what happens. Are you noticing the detachment here? I'm not talking about forcing the market to give me a damn thing. I'm saying I'm taking a position with a stop, a set loss that I'm willing to lose because I don't know if this position is going to work out. I'm taking a position. If it becomes a trend, I'm going with that trend as long as it goes. So detached. I mean, that's not a pat on my own back. I'm just saying this is the mindset of not being able to control the markets, not being able to control your money making and putting yourself in a position in the grand zero sum game that is the marketplace to put yourself in a position that when people with buy and hold index long only believing in the efficient market hypothesis, theory, whatever you want to call it, that when they crater, you're in a position to clean up and frankly, take their losses. Their losses become your wins. That's how it works. Again, it's quite clever. 
It's quite a brilliant strategy. So many practitioners that I've had on this podcast who come on and they all tell you exactly how they do it. They give great wisdom. But the question becomes for you, do you want to listen or not? Because as we're sitting here in the summer of 2022, imagining if-then possibilities, imagining your if-then contingencies, do you feel comfortable with the foot massage? Do you feel comfortable with Yellen giving you the foot massage? I mean, I don't feel comfortable with anybody giving me a financial foot massage, so to speak. Why would I? Why give that power over to some one person? Why not put yourself in a position that when the next big event happens, that you're sitting there ready to go with your positions on, waiting, waiting to see what happens. And it's remarkable that if you take a strategy like waiting to see what happens, trend following, if you take a strategy like that, it can change your life. It can save a family fortune. It can create a family fortune. There hasn't been a time in the last 20 plus years where I'm not excited about the possibilities that this technology, because it really is that, This trend-following thinking, this trend-following philosophy is a type of technology, a brilliant, simple, straightforward technology that works because most people are batshit crazy. Most people can't control their emotions. Most people want something for nothing. Most people will get in and do something wrong at the very top of an extended bubble market with no plan, no strategy, no stop loss. So again, this is how all of these big events that I mentioned at the top, those particular dates, it's the same process. Event after event after event, year after year, decade after decade, it doesn't change. People are the same. Humanity is the same. Greed and fear never go away. And as they say, it's up the escalator and down the elevator. Meaning, the markets often go up like an escalator and they come down like an elevator. And when I say the markets, I'm specifically talking about stock market indices. Up the escalator, down the elevator. Is that your strategy? If you're comfortable with it, If you trust the yelling foot massage, then go with it. But if you want something different, if you want to see how things can turn out, if you've got a plan predicated on waiting to see what happens when the rest of the world goes to hell in a handbasket, trend following is an absolute solution. And I'll give one final caveat. If you don't know what I'm saying yet, If this sounds past your pay grade, if this sounds like, yeah, I get a little bit of your energy, Mike, I get a little bit of your passion, but I'm not seeing something clearly, drop me an email. I will give you as much explanation as I can. Now, it's going to take a little work on your part. You might have to read a little bit more if what I'm saying in this podcast episode doesn't yet make 100% sense, but you can do it. Anybody can do what I'm talking about absolutely anybody. You've got to want it first and foremost. How can you reach me? It's simple. Michael at Covell.com. My first name at my last name.com. Again, if what I'm saying today isn't resonating 100%, if it's not clear yet, send me an email and I'll try my level-headed best to give you a kick in the ass towards the right direction. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash or just trying to make a lot of money, Trend Following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. 
I will send you the right trend following steps to take along with my free video. But if you want to buy and hold, trust the government and trust Wall Street. This is absolutely not for you.